Hi, this is Wiseblood, and you're watching Nardwar's Video Vault. Nardwar! Who are you? I'm Wise Blood. Wise Blood, welcome to Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada, Neptune Records. It's beautiful here. Thank you for having me. Right off the bat, Wise Blood, I have a gift for you right here a Moby Grape poster oh, wow. and a love poster. Wow. Two in one. Great bands. Really great stuff. Thank you. You love the grape, don't you? I do. I do. I really love that OAR, that um, Alexander Skip Spence record. So. He, that was after he escaped Moby Grape, right? Exactly. And we have another gift for you, Wise Blood, right here. An Alexander oh! Skip Spence promo poster for the reissue of Orr. Wow. I am thrilled. This is one of the best. What can you say about Skip Spence? Well, I had this record in my car for four years um, on CD. And I had some friends that told me that I had to stop playing it because I, I literally wore it out that bad. It was maybe my top one of my top records. Um, I just think it's so mysterious and kind of internal and weird and um, very lush and beautiful. It's like an American Sid Barrett. And there we have for you the Sunday's reissue of Skip Spence or as well as a Moby Grape love poster. I love love too. So thank you. Only the best for wise blood. Wise blood, Mr. Ort. Choir teacher. What's up? You know about my choir teacher. That's that's insane. <laughs> people didn't like your voice in high school? You know what? It wasn't that people didn't like it. I wasn't chosen for a, a lot of solos. I didn't have... There wasn't like he saw this thing in me and was trying to draw it out. He saw me as this kind of rogue weirdo, and he had a lot of respect for me, you know? And he kind of let me do my own thing. But it wasn't like he was grooming me. It wasn't like he selected me. It was like, I think you're going to go somewhere, you know? And your dad dated Joni Mitchell? I think he went on some dates with, with Joni, yeah. Um, what was that like? I think for him, interestingly enough, he was so, like, in rap. Hot? I mean, he was really good looking, my dad, no doubt. But he was so into New Wave at the time. I don't think he... What did he look like? What did he look like? Just so... Um, how do I explain what my Why was dad Joni was? Mitchell attracted to your dad? He, and Angelica Houston. Well, he was very charismatic and, and handsome, uh, kind of tall, lanky, like um, strong features, maybe like, um, I don't really know any actors that you could, see. maybe like a, a blonde Tom Hanks? I don't know. It's hard for me to say, but I will say that he was a rock star. He had a band in L.A., and he was really in the new wave thing. And I think when he was hanging with Joni, I don't know if he was really enchanted by her legendary status at that moment. I think he was more like, whoa, talking heads, that's where it's at. And Joni's just kind of like, you know, that's an older folky thing. So I don't think he was particularly starstruck, which is mind blowing. But um, I think they're just, you know, buddies. It wasn't meant to be a full blown relationship. Your grandma also did whistling vaudeville style. Yeah, wow. <laughs> she was like a, a professional kind of bird collar, and she um, she would get lashings. She'd get whipped if she didn't win competitions. So it was a different kind of showbiz, you know? And people can see her in Charlie Chan movies? She, I think, is an extra in a silent film. Um, she was part Asian, and so I think she's playing like a Native American child in a silent film. I've never seen it. I just heard about it. Are you into bird whistling at all? No, I'm not good at that. I, I can't do any novelty whistles, but um, but she was weird. She had weird talents. But she, that's to be on vaudeville? That's amazing. Yeah, yeah. I think um, when you, well, she was born in Seattle and then moved to L.A. as a young girl. And I think growing up in L.A. in the 20s, you know, entertainment was like a big, that was how, you know, people farmed out their children. So I think her parents were both like, yeah, yeah, go get it. What exactly is going on in this photo right here? Oh, wow. <laughs> this is my first love, my true love, um, Jim Strong, who was an original member of Wise Blood uh, when I first started. And uh, this was actually at a different show, though. I, I was the singer of a band called Satanized, and it was kind of like a weird 
uh, mathy metal band and I was the singer and I would do pranks where I'd like put some bananas in a garbage bag with fake blood under my shirt and like rip it open and I think one show just to kind of get Jim back for uh, all his wayward ways I just kind of you know started beating him up with the fake blood and and then somebody took that picture it's just so good looking it's really beautiful but. is that wise blood right there no that is my friend Cecilia Corrigan she's a poet that's me. See me like facing Jim, like kind of full blown attack zone. That's my head, the singer of Satanized, and that's Jim. He knew he was going to get attacked. It was kind of planned, but I think there was there was maybe more implied. Old dark juice. He is old dark juice. Back when it was Wise Blood and the Dark Juices, um, Jim was the dark juice. Yeah. What was a Wise Blood gig now versus a Wise Blood gig in the past? Well, at the past in the house. Um, it would be me, you know, kind of playing acoustically with my nylon string guitar. And then I'd have Jim and my friend Jordan uh, playing saws, you know, like bowed, you know, saw, which is just like a tool that you can bow and make strange sounds. And like little tape recorders and little bells and whistles. It was very scratchy, sniffy kind of sound collage with this very like earthy, folky stuff on top of it. And what about nowadays? And now it's, I got this band, I got a drummer, I got a bassist, and I'm singing with my keys and my guitar. It's really way more put together and ultimately more, it's kind of more architectural. It's structured in such a way to be enjoyed by more people. Weiss, well, you mentioned the thrift shops. Yes, I do like some thrifting. Now, speaking of thrift shops, what are you wearing today? Unfortunately, this is not thrifted. This is a, a lend. It's, it's a, a white suit, um, kind of 70s style made by uh, Chloe. It's got the, the little nudie suit configuration going on in the back and the front. Um, and it is on lend from a much more powerful fashionista than I. And she's very kind. She let me borrow it. On lend? Yes. So she wants it back. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm getting, um, getting another one, you know, made. I couldn't afford a Chloe suit personally. So I'm getting, getting a suit made with a little bit of wise blood accoutrement. Kind of my own nudie suit. Quote, rolling up to your town looking for the... Mods. I'm always looking for the mods. Yeah, what's going on there? I've I love mods. I think I just think they're so fascinating. I'm a big Ian Savonius fan who's kept it pretty mod this whole time. I love the seeds. I just love that time in history when the sixties was first starting to happen and people were kinda like, you know, taking the square and making it weirder, but they're still kinda like coming from a more angular modern perspective. And uh I I like to see who stays mod. Because it takes a lot of effort. I, I don't have that kind of effort. You know, I, I do the grunge thing. I, I would never wear boots and like walk six blocks with my, with my like quaffed button up shirt in the heat. But when I see people do that, I'm like, wow, power to you. That's cool. And you also played the Mod Club in Toronto. I guess I did. <laughs> and Weisbuck, I have another gift for you. Two records right here. The original Wizard of Oz soundtrack from 69 and a Jaws soundtrack. <gasps> Incredible. From 73, the original. Wow. This is this is groundbreaking. I'm a big Jaws fan. Yeah, how are these important to you? The Oz and the Jaws. The Oz and the Jaws. Well, I think for me, definitely with horror films, you know, those are some of the only places in, in music or in the mainstream where like interestingly spooky experimental music kind of leaks into people's ears. So when I first started making music and I was a little on the weirder side, my family and people would be like, oh, it sounds like a horror film. So I kind of took that as a compliment and got into a lot of horror film soundtracks. The Haunted Cream Egg. The Haunted Cream Egg, yes. That was a big house in uh, West Philly, which is a whole area full of crazy old Victorian houses that they used to rent out to punks. And Haunted Cream Egg was kind of our house show spot. And we threw a lot of weird gigs in the attic and weird spots. The Big Pink House, the PFAS Warehouse. Well, wow. The Big Pink was the first place I lived after I left home. I moved out of my house when I was 17. Um and graduated high school early and, and moved to the Big Pink where they had a lot of punk shows and it's like a big terrible punk house I don't know if it's still there but it was it was pretty gruesome but as a young 17 year old it was like mind-blowingly uh, liberating and why but I was also wondering about this band right here very important to you wolf eyes wolf eyes yes what can you say about the eyes of the wolf the eyes of the wolf well my name W-I no <laughs> 
But first off, I guess um, when they put a record out on Sub Pop, that was a really big deal for me because I had been listening to some weird music and that was maybe the first time that I saw kids in the hallway at my high school who were like, whoa, that, I heard that record and it was insane. And I was like, finally, like this stuff is reaching the people, you know. And I saw Wolf Eyes when I was a teenager and immediately, you know, became hypnotized by harsh noise and experimental music. And it kind of ate up a good, you know, six years of my life just pursuing that and being obsessed. And really seeing it, it was so innovative at the time. It was the obvious kind of progression of rock and roll. Like if you're going to do something completely fresh and new, it had to be kind of dismantling and deconstructing sound. And that's what they were doing. They're kind of dismantling and deconstructing rock and roll. And Andrew W.K. did some stuff with them. Yeah, he. Um, I had a Beast People DVD, which was another configuration of that whole, you know, Michigan crew. And Andrew W.K. is in it, you know, pre-steroids, pre-Andrew W.K. that we know. And he's like really scrawny and like playing the piano. And yeah, I remember being really thrilled with that too. Around the time I got into Wolf Eyes, I kind of became so enraptured with noise that I started doing more kind of power electronic vibe shows and really distorted and loud and kind of like screaming and feedback. And then that eventually honed back into songwriting after I was like, oh, you know what? I'm actually better at writing songs than I am screaming my head off every night. You know? The Meow Gazine. That's my brother's Meow Gazine. Yes, my brother, Zach Maring, um, he makes coloring books. And he, he's made a really cool Beatles coloring book, David Bowie coloring books, and the Meow Gazine. And he also does music, like he covered the Suicide Boys. Yeah, he's a, he's like the most prolific musician in our family. He makes an album like every week. It's it's overwhelming, actually. It's like he's a real outsider artist. Now you are wise blood, but I was confused. There is also this wise blood. There is this wise blood, and this wise blood is why my name is spelled differently than this wise blood i i love that i also had a band called dirt dish just to be ironic at that time but wise blood you know this is a swan's side project and it's all one word but i think it was greg from that band espers came up to me when i was a teenager and he's like you got to be really careful those guys from the 80s need money and they're gonna sue you for being called wise blood and i was i didn't know at the time that maybe that wasn't going to happen so i changed the spelling of my name and the rest is history. Although Clint Ruin is pretty cool, scraping fetus off the wall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, this is this is incredible. I haven't seen one of these in a long time. I have another gift for you right here, Wise Blood. A Herman Hess record. Wow, wow. Big fan of his writings as a teen. And I didn't really... Is this him reading it in German? From 1973. Wow, that's incredible. In German, yes. I love German. Yeah, it's what are you going to see about the Hess? You know, the Herman Hess. The Herman Hess, it's very interesting because those were books that I read when I was 15 and I was like, Steppenwolf, you know, Siddhartha, these books were really big and powerful for me. I haven't revisited them as a fully formed adult. So I don't know if I would go back and have the same reaction. I, in my mid 20s, had this realization that I had been inundating myself with nothing but male authors and my whole perspective had been skewed towards, you know, men. And so I think I would go back and read it and I would have a little different feeling about it, you know. Um, definitely could never get into Hemingway for that reason. I could just smell his man bullshit from a mile away. But Hess was, was poetic. And speaking of men, right behind him, another gift for you. <gasps> Hoagie Carmichael. Does he get a pass? Oh, lots of men get a pass with me. Don't get me wrong. But I was just saying for authors, but... With male musicians, I feel like that is less of an influence. I don't feel oppressed when I listen to Bob Dylan and guys like that. Weisblood, K-L-F-C. K-L-C. Radio. <laughs> Radio. You did this show. I did. And you played, I noticed, this artist right here. Inka. Or Inca Or Inca Or. This is a deep cut, big influence on me. She is a, a noise goddess, vocal drone um, weirdo, who kind of originated in the Bay Area. I think she's originally from the Midwest, but she lived in Portland and lived in San Fran. Eventually became a really great holistic um, practitioner. But her record I got when I was maybe 16, and it was the most feminine of all that noise music that I had ever heard. And uh, yeah, I used to play it obsessively. I tried to play it for a bunch of kids at my college and they were just like, whoa, dude. 
on KLC. Yep. There's also K Boo in Portland. Yes, I played on K Boo, I think, but I accidentally took too much cough medicine and it was a really rough show. And the people there were kind of like, whoops, like maybe shouldn't have had her play. How did you know you took too much medicine? Because when you take too much cough medicine, you start tripping. And then like, you know, your perspective gets all disassociated. So it's kind of like when you see those R. Crumb drawings where they're like, you know, that's like what cough syrup, too much cough syrup feels like. So it was a good gig then for you. It was it was a disaster. I mean, like I don't trip when I play. I, I try to keep it really sharp to deliver the message to the people. So at that time, it was actually really traumatic and weird, and I couldn't really, couldn't climb out of that hole, you know? And Canada is very important to wise blood. For instance, shadowy men. Oh my God, my favorite. I love shadowy men on a shadowy planet. I love the kids in the hall. This is super deep cut for me. I didn't, oh man, I love this record. I had it on CD. I bought it off eBay as a kid, you know? Instrumental, a lot is instrumental. Yeah, theme for from TV, that's my favorite. Having an average weekend. That's the theme. Kids in the hall. Do, 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 do. Wow, this is going to get a lot of play. Seth Abramson. Do you know him on Twitter? Yeah, yeah. Who is he? And he always shouts you out. Yeah, he's a he's a political writer who, who has written some very scathing, incredible things um, with Trump. And I think he, he just has a really vocal political voice. Um, and the fact he's taken a liking to my music, is it's extremely flat. Good night, y'all. Yeah, yeah. But I, I, um, I couldn't quote him literally, but um, I'm very flattered. How did you find him? I just saw that somebody was tweeting about me a bunch. And I was like, who is this guy? And somebody had to explain to me who he was that I looked into it a little bit more. And hopefully we'll meet someday. But Shout out to Seth. Shout out to Seth. Keep on doing that real work. It's hard work. And the threads. Yeah, the great threads. <laughs> and winding up here, wise blood. I have another gift for you to end this interview right here. An original 1968 Velvet Underground poster from Vancouver. Wow. I'm so shocked. That's that's incredible. Oh, that's when he played so the beautiful. Retinal Circus in 1968 in Vancouver. Wow. I bet it was a really weird show. I'm sure it was very strange. Well, actually, you're kind of psychic in saying that. John Cale fell off the stage and broke his wrist. <gasps> No doubt. They're strung out, trying to jam and drone out for hours. That's amazing, though. That's so incredible. you can mail back your experiences in Vancouver because it's a postcard as well. Wow. I wonder if people would write back like, what an incredibly bad band. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> That's amazing. You love the Velvet Underground, don't you? Yeah, I'm, I'm a huge Lou Reed fan, huge John Cale fan, love Lamont Young. Everything that touched that band, Andy Warhol, it's very influential on me. Why split? Anything else you want to add to the people out there at all? I just wanted to say thank you for listening to my music and, and thank you so much for finding out so many obscure facts about me. I, I feel really known and I feel really loved by these gifts. So thank you. Well, thank you very much, Wise Blood. Why should people care about Wise Blood? Why should people care? I think, I mean, it depends. I don't, I don't want to say anybody should or shouldn't care. It's kind of open um, in terms of their liking, but I think I try to be honest and I try to sing from the heart and I'm really not trying to throw anybody for a loop. And I hope that um, people appreciate that because in these times, I think there's a lot of emotional manipulation that goes on. Well, thanks so much, Wise Blood. Keep on rocking in the free world and do, do, loot, do. Do, do. Yeah. All right, all right, that's really good. <laughs> He's the best. Doesn't get much better than that.